the grammar of PowerPoint. In this video, we're going to talk about the ways in which you can integrate images into your PowerPoint to facilitate and reinforce your messaging. To integrate images effectively, we first have to understand the functions that allow us to bring images into the PowerPoint and then understand how to apply these functions in an effective way. First, we're going to start with the function. To insert an image into your PowerPoint, you'll have to go to the Insert tab, which is in the top left corner of your ribbon. From there, it's going to give you lots of different options for inserting different things, shapes, icons, etc. But we're going to be looking at pictures. When you click on the pictures, a drop down menu is going to appear. The first option being this device, which allows you to upload an image that's on your computer. You can also use stock images that the PowerPoint program already has instilled in the software, or you can choose online pictures, which will allow you to bring images from online being image search. Now the question becomes, what is the most effective way to incorporate an image into your slide? Let's take a look at an ineffective example of image integration. On this slide, we have our hypothetical notes on the left side, and they're accompanied by two images of the handsome and talented award-winning Nicolas Cage. But you can see just looking at this that the slide isn't balanced, and there's some problems with this image integration. So let's break down what the issues are. First, the images aren't centered. Right? There's lots of empty space. In addition, there's different sizes. We have a larger picture and a smaller picture, which seem unbalanced. In addition, they have different colors. One's in black and white, and one's in vibrant full color. Moreover, there's two images for no apparent reason. They're both images of Nick Cage, so why do we need two? The square borders of the images also seem arbitrary. There's lots of different options, round borders, transparent, but you wanna make a conscious decision and make sure they're, they fit into your slide. And that brings us to our last point. The images simply haven't been integrated in the slide, but rather slapped haphazardly onto the slide. So let's fix the issues with that last slide. First thing, we just use one image where only one image is needed. In addition, if that image is rectangular, then we're going to color code the text box and make it rectangular as well so that they fit together. This resolves all the issues that we had in the previous slide. The image and text are now fitted together. There's no empty spaces and the slide is balanced. The shapes are all consistent and congruent with each other and we now have a color coded slide. As a result, your audience won't even notice what's going on. They'll see a balanced, even slide and they'll be focused on the text and messaging rather than having their attention drawn to those other issues that we've already highlighted. Some people like having empty spaces on their slide so that the slides don't look too crowded. In this case, you want to use images that have transparent backgrounds. That allows them to integrate the image organically into the slide and facilitate that empty space. The question is, how do we get images with transparent backgrounds? Option one, simply go to the image search of your favorite search engine, whatever that happens to be, Google, Yahoo, Bing, and type the word transparent after your search term. The results should yield images that have transparent backgrounds, like these ones, that you can easily integrate into your PowerPoint slide. Option two, got an ideal image, but it's not transparent? Don't worry. Go to remove.bg and then drop the image in there. The website will actually remove the background for you. For example, We've gone to Bing, we got this beautiful picture of Nicolas Cage. We take that image and we send it over to remove.bg and bam, it creates that transparent background and now we can upload the image into our PowerPoint slide. PowerPoint also has a handy formatting pictures option. So once you get an image onto the slide, you can click on it and there'll be a new tab in your ribbon called picture format. Immediately underneath that, we have the picture styles, which will frame your picture in a multitude of ways. Maybe the faded background, the rounded mirror, and multiple frames. 
I'm not a big fan of these to be perfectly honest, but we also have this crop option off to the right. And when you click on that, a drop down menu will appear. Keep in mind, you want to consider crop to shape where you choose the specific shape as well as the aspect ratio. This is the difference between a rectangle and a square or an oval and a circle. Now, once you get that, you can play around. You can put Nick Cage in an oval or a circle or a parallelogram or a heart, a lightning bolt, up arrow, plus sign, triangle. Now, obviously, a lot of these are pretty busy and distracting, but a circle, a parallelogram in some cases, a rectangle, even an oval, those can all be pretty handy. So keep an eye out for these and consider which ones might be effective for your slides. In place of images, we can also use icons and or 3D models, which are both available under the Insert tab in PowerPoint. First, let's take a look at how we can use the icons. To access icons, simply click the Insert tab in the top ribbon and then select Icons. That will take you to this page where Icons is set at the default. You'll see this search bar at the very top and you can put in key terms such as people and that will return you icons that are associated with that keyword. There's several other options here though, including images, cut out people, stickers, videos, and finally, illustrations. Now, let's take a look at each of these, starting with images. To begin, simply drop a keyword into the search box that will return images associated with that keyword, and you can then use them as the background for a PowerPoint slide or crop them into a smaller size so that they can be used to accompany and reinforce a text. I often use the cut out people option. This feature provides you with images of people on transparent backgrounds. They can slide up into your frame. And then I often will put word bubbles or thought bubbles beside them to ask or answer questions and foster a dialogue. Stickers can be used in much the same way, but they're a little more playful. They're cartoons of animals, insects, such as bees, cats, dogs, and chickens, and you can put the word bubbles beside them as well. They're a little more animated. You'll have surprised faces and such. Play around with that. They can be really engaging. The videos I don't use too often, but they can be effective on title cards. They have a little motion. They often have a lot of blank space where you can put a text, so they can be effective as title cards. And finally, we have the illustrations. I haven't used these too often. They have some images that are similar to the stickers, but other graphics that are representative of more specific keywords. Check this out, see if any of those work for you, and be creative. Even though I haven't used this feature myself, it could help you foster and facilitate the meaning that you are trying to express in your slides. PowerPoint also offers these 3D images. Now, as you can see, there's a 360 angle view of these images. You can add some animations, move them around a little bit, so they can be pretty engaging. However, I personally find them to be extremely distracting, so I have steered clear of these. My key goal is to make sure animations and images reinforce my message and don't distract from it. But that doesn't mean that you can't use them effectively. If you do find an image in there, you don't have to animate it, and if you do, you might find that it can help foster the meaning that you're trying to express and make your PowerPoints more engaging. That's all we have for this episode of the Grammar of PowerPoint. We focused on integrating images this time to foster meaning, but if you want to check out some of our other videos on the Grammar of PowerPoint to understand how to use transitions, animations, and shapes, be sure to check out some of our other videos. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.